This is the third part of a series of video lectures for what you can expect when you get into the Laney Welding Lab. If you can see, Go. you'll get burnt if you don't wear a All welding right. hood. So here I have a handle uh, that's made uh, for practicing welding. And uh, whenever we practice welding uh, out of position, which means vertical, overhead, and horizontal, we want to have a handle connected to our plate. And even a lot of times when we're welding flat, we'll connect a handle to our plate. And what the handle does, it allows us to pick the metal up without touching the hot metal with our glove and carry it over to the water trough and dunk it in the water and cool it down uh, uh, without uh, burning our glove, all right? Uh, when we're welding vertical, uh, as we rotate the handle, it'll allow us to change the angle that we're welding at by just rotating the handle. But we have to connect the handle on properly. Uh, if I don't tell people how to connect the handle, and I tell them to connect it to one of the sides, they'll usually try to connect it just like this. But this is not correct, all right? What we want to do is we want to actually get the handle basically flat to the floor or flat to the table and connect it on flat. And you can see right now I have my hand resting on top of the table and as I tack it with my hand on the table the handle won't move very much. Also I'm tacking it right in the center. I don't want to attach it up here on one end or down here on the other end I want it to be right in the middle and a lot of times I'll actually hold the handle a little bit underneath the edge of the plate and put a weld that connects the handle right there and make it so it doesn't stick up above the edge of the plate All right now when I put the plate inside of the holder here and the plate is attached to my handle I'll be able to weld flat just like I was on the table but now it's connected to the ball and as I rotate my handle right the plate will rotate up to the vertical position right welding vertical at first is too hard to get a good weld so typically what we do is start welding uphill with it at a slant and then make it harder and harder and harder as we get better at our welding, All right? So let's connect a handle. Uh, uh, we'll be able to put it up on the plate without having to hold it. And a lot of times when I connect a handle, I'll use a little piece of uh, rod that I'm going to throw away. I'm not looking to get a long weld, all right? I'm just looking to get a connection uh, that'll hold that handle on there, all right? So uh, 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 let's uh, do it, all right. So there I got uh, uh, my handle on, and you can see I got a weld, and it doesn't stick up above the edge of the plate. So as I'm welding, right, there won't be any bump there that gets in the way uh, uh, and makes me go, have to go around it or make some kind of mistake uh, as I'm welding. It's good to clean that off and it's good to shake it around a little. Sometimes people get that handle on so weak that it will fall off, uh, the plate will fall off easy. If we have a weak connection, I would just grab another rod and add some more weld there. But we don't want to weld on the inside here. We don't want to weld all the way around the handle or else we won't be able to break it off uh, later. As I move from one side of my plate uh, to another, I might break the handle uh, loose and reattach it 
to another side. Right now, I can weld on this side, and if I flip it over, I can also weld flat on this side, all right? It's a little bit higher right now, all right, than it was when I had it flipped over, but basically both sides are the same position, all right? And we got ourselves a V joint. Now, uh, uh, after I learned to run beads in the flat position, right, which would be dragging the rods from this side of the plate to this side of the plate, pulling it across. Then I would uh, switch to pushing my rod across the plate. And so I'll start down here on the bottom and weld uphill. Some rods are designed to be able to weld downhill or uphill. But 7018 electrodes should only be welded flat or uphill, never downhill. Do we want to weld with our 7018 electrodes? All right, and uh, and so our welds should come out pretty much like they did uh, when we we're welding flat. If they don't come out looking like our flat welds then we're probably doing something a little bit wrong, all right? We want to uh, uh, work at uh, improving the quality of our weld, typically before we make it a little bit harder, all right? In the beginning, it goes pretty quick, and uh, uh, with a few welds, we can make it a little bit harder, a little bit harder, but as we get closer and closer to the plate being at 90 degrees, uh, it, it, it starts really slowing down, right? And we have to do a lot more practice, right? Now that I've uh, tilted the plate to vertical, um, it's going to be hard for me to practice on unless I raise up uh, the handle on the pole, right? And so depending on what position we're welding in, we can raise our metal up, lower our metal down, tilt it back, and we can actually rotate this around the pole. When I'm welding vertical, I don't really need my table anymore, and so one of the things that I'll do is move the table completely out of the way, and I'll just use it to keep my hammer and my brush on, and this allows me to kind of move in closer to my plate uh, while I'm welding, right? When I go to weld vertical, right, I like to uh, uh, point the rod a little bit in the uphill direction, and we do this to counter gravity, right? So uh, uh, we never want to be welding vertically up, pointing the rod down. Uh, we could do a good weld with it perfectly straight, but it would uh, be harder to move forward. As we tilt the rod just a little, it preheats the metal in front of the weld, allowing us to move quicker up the plate, all right? And as we pull away, the machine puts out more power, makes the weld hotter, makes it want to drip more, and so we got to be really good and keeping that electrode close to the metal while we're welding, right? Uh, so that we don't get any drips, right? And distance is probably the number one thing as uh, stick welders that we need to master, right? Being real good at controlling our distance, right? And so uh, as I weld here, right, I'm uh, looking from the side I, I got the rod in, not in front of me, but off to the side. And as I uh, weld, right, I can come in with my rod, right, and my body is not getting in the way, right, of me moving back or forward as I weld, right? And I've kind of moved my leg out of the way so that, right, anything dripping doesn't land on my knee while I'm welding. 
Usually when I weld, I'll stand up. And when I'm standing up, I might put an uh, arm up against the pole here uh, to steady my hand as I weld, all right? And move in also. Or I might use the pole. Uh, 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 when we weld, it's very important that we're as steady as possible and we'll typically look for anything to help us be more steady. Uh, if I didn't have a chair uh, to sit on, I might uh, grab a five gallon bucket to sit on or something like that. Or if I'm standing up, right, I'd want to lean up against something as I weld. A lot of times as people are welding pipelines, they'll actually wrap their hand around the pipe and use that uh, 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 arm that's wrapped around the pipe to help steady them as they weld downhill. Uh, usually uh, gas pipelines are welded downhill. Uh, so they're not welded with 7018. All right. So uh, uh, we can uh, run a little weld with this rod and uh, we'll show you a little. So here we go. So we didn't burn the rod all the way down on purpose, right? And uh, I want to uh, uh, tell you what I was doing. As I was welding, I was moving left and right. Not very far, but I was uh, pulling the electrode off of one piece of plate, putting it on the other plate, pretty much giving a hundred percent of the electricity to one plate at a time and then bridging uh, the gap in between. And uh, uh, especially when we have a gap uh, between two pieces of metal, the electricity will be attracted to one plate more than the other. Because the handle is attached to this plate, Typically, the electricity would want to go to this plate more than it would want to go to this plate, right? And so uh, I would force the electricity to go where I want it to go, right? And watch uh, uh, how much it builds up and how uh, everything comes together. One nice thing about welding vertical is when it comes time to clean, we don't have to move our plate at all, right? And uh, you can see uh, uh, the weld there, and it has a little uh, ripple uh, to it from my movement uh, of going back and forth uh, across the weld, all right? Now, after I get all the way to the top, I'm not done. A lot of times people get to the top and they go, I need a new plate. I uh, welded the one you gave me up. Well, this plate here, we want to practice building up what we call multiple pass welds. So typically when we weld, our welds don't change in size all that much. And when we weld on thicker metal, instead of making our welds bigger, We'll put in more welds and we'll add them all up to add together to be one big weld. And the uh, uh, only practice will uh, allow us to get good at joining together 10 welds 
uh, that all come together uniformly, evenly, right? Uh, uh, this is one of the things we want to master while we're practicing. One, two, three. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about our ventilation system here. Uh, when I first came to uh, work here, all we had is a little hole in the ceiling uh, where all the smoke would be sucked through. But now we have these arms that not only we can move left and right, but we can also make them longer and shorter. All right. And uh, what we want to do is we typically want to get uh, this uh, 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 bell here above the area that we're welding, but we don't want to create a wind, all right? So I would never pull it down like this while I'm welding. This is too close. And what will happen is as I'm welding, the sparks will get sucked right up into the arm. And uh, uh, in this part of the, uh, uh, the hose will start to melt and maybe even catch on fire, all right? So uh, uh, we want it far enough away that uh, any sparks, any hot metal, right, they go to the floor. And that the only thing that goes up here is smoke, right, while we're welding. Now, the way that we know that we have our uh, hood in a good spot is when we stop welding, we look around the booth, and it looks clean. We don't see a lot of smoke. If you stop welding and the booth is smoky, that's not good for your health. And uh, it typically means that either this is in the wrong spot or maybe the uh, fan turned off, right? And so, you know, you can feel up here uh, to see uh, how good the wind is, see if there's anything blocking it. Uh, and. Uh, move the arm around till uh, you get a, a good uh, spot. Now, when I go to practice welding overhead, I'm not able to get this above the weld. It has to be kind of on the side. And I'll, I'll lower this up, I'll bring this up, shorten it down, and put it against the wall, like this. And then I'll, look, I'll, lift, up, I'll lift up my uh, 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 plate, Right, and I'll uh, I'll make it uh, overhead, and I might you know bring this off a little bit closer, right? And as I'm welding, there'll be a little bit of suction from the back of the plate, and so as I'm welding, it'll suck the smoke out the back, which will make it easier for me to see as I start from the back of the plate and I weld towards the front of the plate. All right, I'm always welding towards my eye as I weld, All right? And when I'm doing overhead, again, I can weld on both sides of the plate, but when I flip it over, right, it changes elevation. So now I'm welding at a little bit lower elevation, and so I might want to lift this up a little bit so that I can see better uh, what's going on. And uh, usually this arm being right here uh, 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 takes care of all of the smoke without it having to be directly above uh, uh, the weld. Either in the booth, I'll break it off, or I'll come over here and, and, and whack it on there, right? And then take it back to the booth and reattach it for welding on a new side, right? And so uh, we don't want to have to cut this off with a cutting torch, all right? We we'll just give it a little whack or even sometimes break it by hand, all right? We can put it in the vise, all right, uh, to hit it. Uh, but I usually hit it on the box right here. And uh, uh, sometimes the plate is at the end of the life. And typically this is where it goes uh, at the end of its life, all right, is into this box. Uh, if we have a piece of metal that uh, still can be welded on, then typically, right, 
we'll uh, uh, put it in this file over here, and uh, somebody else uh, can grab it uh, and practice welding on it. Right. Cool.